Hey guys, it is Miss Sim Reno. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another apartment renovation. I haven't done an apartment in what feels like a long time, and I say that every time because it genuinely is a very large gap of time between apartments for me is what I'm realizing. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I really love apartments, but sometimes I really just get hooked on building uh, exteriors compared to just decorating. But this is one that I've actually been sitting on since May and I haven't shared it yet, which is pretty wild. I don't know why that is. I completely forgot about it, but I think we're at, I wanna say 18 Culpeper House in San Myshuno. And I just wanted to decorate an apartment and I had no theme in mind. I had no like family. Aside from the fact, well, I guess I was kind of thinking of either a single sim or a couple that live here because this is only a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment. The bathroom is actually pretty big. And then the second room, which you could absolutely turn into a bedroom if you wanted a family to actually live here, is an at-home office. That's kind of what I was thinking and that's what I ended up making it. So that was the thought is just that maybe this was a couple starting out. Now <laughs> I say starting out and yet this apartment is very well furnished, very well decorated. So maybe a reasonably financially successful couple who's starting out. Maybe there's two lawyers, maybe there's two doctors. I don't know. It can be for whatever Sims that you would like. It does not matter whatsoever what I was necessarily thinking, but this is the living space. I love this layout for the apartment too, because I did a little bit of a split leveling, which I don't always do. I think I've done it in this unit and maybe the other unit that's in this same apartment building before. I think they're the most or the best suited. Is that what I'm trying to say? The best suited for split leveling. And I really, really enjoyed how it looked here too, because it gave me the opportunity to have this big open living room and it's open to the kitchen and the dining room, which is essentially what you walk right into, which might be a little bit unusual, but I think for an apartment, it's pretty realistic. I would even say, so the house that I now live in, yes, the house, which is just wild for me to say because my husband and I bought our first house, which we were so excited about. Anyway, so in our house, you walk right into the living room. However, in our living room, it's also just wide open to the kitchen and the dining space, which I really like. I like open floor plans, even if I can't or feel like I can't successfully do them in The Sims, but I don't know, that's kind of what this apartment reminded me of is just like this big open floor plan and it just makes it feel so much more spacious. And I feel as though with these, I wanna say this is the tall wall height, which is atrocious. I don't like the tall wall height. <laughs> I don't like it at all. But I think for the tall wall height, having a more open concept like this is actually a bit more fitting because it makes it feel far more lived in, far more built up and just not as odd. And I think the split leveling helps with that too because the living room doesn't seem to have as high of a ceiling compared to the dining room in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know, that's just how I kind of see it. Now I did struggle a bit with this kitchen because I realize this every time I go to try to build an island. So I was furnishing the kitchen and then I thought to myself like, darn it, I really don't feel like I have the space to put a full dining table. This isn't really going to work. So I thought of putting a bar here, kind of right near the stairs, which was a little bit unusual. I was gonna use this little trick with like the shelf and some bar high countertops. And I just really didn't like how it was looking. I was also trying to build in some bookcases, but then I ended up putting a closet here and truly realized I had no space for a full dining table. So what I believe I end up doing is getting rid of the bar with the bar height counter or the, the bar height counters with the bar stools. It kind of bummed me out and it made the kitchen feel a lot smaller. And I also shifted the uh, closet over to the other wall. And then I just put this really big, pretty dining table from Seasons with matching chairs. And I think it just pulled the entire room together. Again, there isn't as much counter space as I was hoping for. And now as I'm looking at it, I would have put the stove where the sink is because <laughs> I love sinks being in front of windows. So you have something to like look out of as you're doing dishes. But at the same time, the stove next to that tall cabinet would have been a bit odd. So I don't know, it's an apartment, it's The Sims. You can change whatever the heck you want, but I would have made that change, I think. <laughs> now this is going to be the very small entry, which again is open to everything. So there is just a console table here, a mirror. There is also the closet, like I mentioned earlier. And I think I end up putting, I don't even know what I put in that little nook. You know what I mean? Right near the stairs. I can't remember exactly what I put there. There may not be anything, maybe an armchair. 
That's typically what I do is I put an armchair, but I also put some columns and ended up putting a spandrel above this as well, just to kind of make it again, open, but separate the spaces. And yes, I did. I know myself so well. I knew I was going to put an armchair there because there were already plants on the wall. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> I know myself way too well. Sometimes I really have to challenge my my design inclinations is how I'm going to phrase it. I'm always inclined to like put a plant in a corner, maybe a uh, a lamp, maybe a chair, stuff like that. Sometimes I really have to think about different things to include, but it's really difficult. It's really hard because I do the same thing in real life. If I see an empty corner, I'm like, maybe I could put a plant there. I don't know. Actually, so fun fact, I bought a fake plant because I have a cat and she will eat literally any plant that's available. So I have to get a fake one because she doesn't touch those. And we got a fake plant and it was my own personal skinny legend. I was so excited. But um, you know what you should do when you order things off of Amazon is you should probably look at the size because <laughs> no, I didn't get one that was too big. I got one that was exceptionally small and it looks really disproportionate on the floor in the living room where I put it. It just, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I might throw it out or I might return it. I really, I have no idea. I don't even know if I can return it at this point. I don't have the box. So how am I going to send this thing back to Amazon? Anyway, it was, um, it was kind of a travesty. So I want to get a bigger plant, but I didn't realize how expensive fake plants were either. They are grossly expensive. It's unbelievable. I went to, um, what is the store called? Hobby Lobby. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make my own arrangement for like a vase or something. And then you look at the fake plants to piece them all together and that's super expensive. I had no idea. You can tell I'm not really into decor that much in real life, at least not fake plants, because that was a shocker to me. But I just babbled through the entire bedroom. Now, as a reminder, only a one bedroom. So this bedroom is kind of small, but I wanted the bathroom to be a decent size considering it was only a one bedroom. I felt like a bigger kind of like ensuite bathroom would be important. So I decided to do that. And again, you can change the office into another bedroom if you wanted to. I might even make that the primary bedroom and then make this one off the kitchen, like a kid's room or something, if that's what you wanted to do, if you want to play with that kind of family dynamic, but this is going to be the big giant ensuite bathroom. There is like a double sink. I think I do make a few different changes because for some reason, this bathroom was giving me so much strife. I could not figure out a layout to save my life. It was so frustrating. And I tried to put like laundry in here. And I think in about a couple of seconds, you're gonna see a cut in the footage because I realized how much I despised how I was laying out this bathroom. It was just, to me, it was awful. I didn't like it at all. So here is what the bathroom ended up looking like. Again, there is the double sink, but <laughs> things are a little bit more separated, squashed together. I did a bunch of open shelves with like bathroom clutter and stuff, which I thought would be a little bit more I'm not gonna say realistic, but I would say that it looks really lived in. It looks like these Sims have absolutely established themselves here. And I don't know, it's definitely one of the more cluttered bathrooms I've ever made. And I have mixed feelings on it now that I'm looking at it because the double sinks are like right next to each other. There's no space, but there's a few more countertops and at least things are a little bit more laid out appropriately, I guess I'd say. And now this is going to be the office. So I wanted it to be kind of a fancier office. I wanted there to be a really nice desk, a few bookcases, maybe like an armchair or two. I think I end up actually being able to get a fireplace in here at some point. The layout of the office was a bit of a challenge. And again, I was working with platforming. So trying to place things in certain spots really wasn't working for me, but I ended up putting the desk right in front of the window because I thought that that would be a really nice space for it. It would be really nice to be able to look out on the city there, right in that little neighborhood while you're working so you don't feel as like alone and secluded. <laughs> and then this is going to be, oh, did you hear my Apple watch go off? Um, this is going to be the little fireplace that I ended up being able to squeeze in. And I do keep, I think only one armchair. The two just felt really crowded, but I get some bookcases on the opposite wall from the door. I hang up some artwork and just try to make it really lived in and cozy because as I've maybe mentioned a few times, I work from home and having an office in my new house has been such a godsend. Like I actually enjoy working in my office instead of working at like the living room or kitchen table or something like that. I enjoy having my own space. I have a window now that I can look out of and it's just, it's so much more peaceful and so much more of a space where I want to be productive. So 
that's kind of what I was thinking with um, along the lines of making this office in the first place. And then it ended up coming true for me in my own house, which was kind of amazing. But I will leave you all here with the screenshots. I hope you all enjoyed this apartment renovation and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. And I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Understandings and words unspoken.